Hey guys. I hope everybody's doing good. I'm back again with another video. Um, I haven't been on here in a while. Um, the only reason I'm even, um, well, this video doesn't have anything to do with couponing. I could have done a couponing video because I did want, I did go coupon it earlier at Dollar General and I got, actually did a really good deal, but it is now, uh, let me see. It's now 757. Some Dollar General's closing in like the next hour, the next hour or two. So it really don't, um, make any sense to try to do one now so but anyway the reason I'm doing this video is because I, on my channel I want to start like just doing videos on different things sometimes not all the time sometimes I'll do videos maybe like giving my take on a certain topic or whatever I don't do it too often but this is a topic that I've been following for the past couple months I'm pretty sure some of you and if you find this video have heard of this um Jaguar right character so, um, I've been following the story with Jaguar Wright, um, since it started, you know, with her, you know, being on this rampage, um, exposing the industry and stuff like that. So first of all, um, I, um, had to really dig up in my memory banks, even remember who Jaguar Wright was. Once I looked her up, I did remember, I was like, oh yes, the girl that sang with Jay-Z <clears throat> on the, um, on, on the, on the MTV unplugged like mad years ago and it was cool like I remember she really did do a good job but to be honest with you that is pretty much like all that I remember from um Miss Jaguar right <clears throat> um I really didn't I really you know like I say just she, she sings very well but I never really got into her like that so um I know she sang with the Roots and I'm a big Roots fan to this day I love the Roots I love Erica Badu I've seen her in concert before she's awesome and I love Jill Scott, Talib Kweli, all these people. Because I'm a big lover. Like, Neo Soul is, like, one of my favorite musical genres. So, um, so when she came out after Malik B died, and then she started exposing um, The Roots and Common and, you know, Erica Badu and Jill Scott, my first question was, like, okay, well, why did you wait um, t 20 years to come forward with any of this information? And then some of the stuff that she was exposing was to me was very questionable. Like for instance, when she came out with the whole thing with Common about, oh, he stuck his dick in her mouth or whatever. First of all, you said that you and him were dating. You said that y'all were in a relationship, right? Y'all had just done a show. Um, y'all were drunk and smoking and all of that. So if he was your man and y'all was to get in the bed together and y'all was already under the influence, then... I don't think that that was like, oh, he was trying to rape you or take advantage of you. Like he was already drunk and y'all was already together. Y'all was already sleeping in the bed. So to me, I'm looking at it as it, him being your man. I'm just being honest. I'm looking at it as maybe it was a situation where he's your man and maybe he was trying to get shit started. I don't know. Maybe that's how y'all play. <clears throat> But if you really had a problem with it, why didn't you say something then? It wasn't like you pressed charges or anything like that, you know? So for you to come out 20 years later to try to create this narrative, like he's a rapist or whatever, to me, is not cool because I really just don't believe that. Like, let's just be honest as women, we got to cut the bullshit. Like most times, if you with a man, not saying that a man has a right to, um, you know, willingly like to forcefully take sex from you or anything like that. Absolutely not. But if this is your most men if you're in a relationship with a man y'all sleep in the same bed together they not gonna just they not always gonna be like oh well can i have sex with you whatever like they might just start doing things to you to kind of get you into mood or to like put the message out there that hey i want to do something but so when she said that to be honest with you, that's what i got from it i didn't get from him that he was trying to rape her or anything like that i'm just gonna be totally honest and then for her to say that <clears throat> the roots were taking advantage of girls and do all that old type of shit that she claimed that she witnessed. My whole thing is this, you are no better because you're talking about all these crimes and things that you witnessed and how you're trying to get people to go to jail, but you were there, you witnessed it and said nothing. So that would make you kind of an accomplice because you even admitted that you would bring girls to them because you're by yourself. So it's like, what is the point in, in bringing out all this stuff? Because it's almost like you kind of incriminate yourself in a sense. 
So I really didn't see the point in all of that. And then when she started going after Jill Scott and Erica Badu, now you're just making yourself look jealous and bitter. Why? Because they career went somewhere and yours didn't. You get what I'm saying? So here's the thing. I'm the kind of person I think outside the box. Like I'm not one of these jump on the bandwagon people or whatever. Like when she came out, everybody was just on this Jaguar right bandwagon. Like, oh, she's the truth. She's exposing the industry. Now don't get me wrong. I'm all for exposing the industry. I know a lot of the BS that goes on behind the industry. Like when she started exposing Puffy and stuff like that. Now that I, I already knew. Cause back in the early 2000s, I actually did date one of, um, jay-z's bodyguards so and he told me a lot of little stories as well and puffy was one of them so when she brought that up i had no doubt about that i'm like okay but if you think about it a lot of stuff that she's bringing up is old news she's not really putting out any information that we are that anybody with common sense to already know or other people have already exposed so you know so to me i feel like you're take you're you're put you're on this you know tour of um putting out information that a some of it we already knew right like even with temple david tevin campbell who don't know that tevin campbell is you know is gay or whatever now the only thing about that is that i don't believe the police report that he had back in the 90s said that he was the one that was picking up men not that he was a prostitute that but he picked up an undercover police officer so that story was not correct so a lot of the stuff that she's putting out there like i say is nothing new half the stuff is stuff that we already knew and then the other half is either hearsay or I feel like shit that she just made up, you know, or twisted. And I feel like people that are like innocent bystanders, you're basically throwing under the bus. Like I say, if you're going to expose the industry, then you need to expose shit that you saw firsthand, not what you heard from somebody else, but things that you have seen firsthand. And a lot of stuff that you saw firsthand, it's like, well, why didn't you say something then? And you bringing it out now kind of makes you look crazy too. So, <clears throat> and then I feel like people aren't really, I think that's what surprises me the most more so than her because i really do believe she's mentally disturbed like there's no doubt about it like just the way she she goes i mean she spends a majority of her day going live ranting raving screaming yelling and all of that while her simp ass husband's in the background not doing anything and i'm gonna get to him later because he's like a mess but what really just shocks me more are the people in the comments her supporters that are cheering her on and making her feel like what she's doing is okay. You know what I'm saying? That it's okay for you to like, my thing is I could care less what she says about Clive Davis and Puffy and shit like that. But people like you're throwing people under the bus, innocent bystanders that don't have anything to do with like to do with it. Or people that is just like, I feel like you're really just making shit up. Like even with the Summer Walker thing, you don't know Summer Walker. You don't know anything about her. And for you to say, oh, I could just tell by looking at her that she's been touched. The girl has never said anything about that, has never put out that kind of information. And you're saying that. And so she was right to go off on you online and tell you that you're weird. And you had no right to say something like that. That's not true because it's not. You going off, you coming off as a hypocrite. You going off on Foxy Brown. I thought that was crazy. When she was going off on, she had a live when she went off on Foxy Brown, calling her a whore and how she slept with every man in the industry and all that type of shit. And I'm just like, how are you any different? Like you were doing the same thing. You already admit that you were sleeping with members of the root, that you slept with Common, that you slept with Talib Welly, you slept with <clears throat> his friends and all that. You not know better. So you making yourself look like a hypocrite by coming out here and talking about these other women in the industry and how they're whores. And you're talking about jill scott well you was a part of the team you was doing the same thing you know what i'm saying and she was talking about Tyler quality they used to sleep together i feel like you just coming up with this bitter shit and i don't understand why people are cheering you on you know what i'm saying like i follow Tyler quality on instagram and he follows me also actually and <clears throat> she's talking about just a lot of it is also irrelevant gossip like you're talking about oh he was sleeping with you while he was with his baby mother darcel and all this type of shit and i'm just like but uh, once again how are you any better because you were willingly sleeping with him when he was with the baby mom so you knew about her and then i didn't understand why storm and Dar darcel the baby mama on for an interview i thought that was so weird like for what 
<clears throat> and then she's coming on there thanking Jaguar. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, she's so brave. I'm so glad that she's bringing out the truth. I'm like, really? Like, it's just, it, it, it's just getting ridiculous. You know, I felt like maybe at first you had some kind of purpose. Oh, I want to make sure that women in the industry are safe or whatever. And I can definitely understand that. And that's cool. But when you're going to start throwing innocent people or under the bus or just putting out people's business that might not need to be put out there. Like, for instance, Mary J. Blige. Now, we all know Mary J. Blige really hasn't had any major scandal in her life that's been out. The only thing to me, to my knowledge, that was really, I guess, major scandal was her divorce. But other than that, yeah, her divorce and, you know, back in the 90s, everybody knew about her and Casey and the drugs and all that, which who hasn't? But nothing really too out the way. And then she's putting it out there that she's actually really gay she likes women she needs to come out the closet i'm just like no she doesn't that's her business and it's not your business to put it out there just because you want to be out there free and you, okay i'm this and i'm that that's cool but you gotta think mary j blodge is was is in her 40s that lady's in her 40s she was born in the early 70s she's come from a cloth where people like to have a certain amount of privacy you get what i'm saying like because even back in the 90s, she wasn't just putting all her business out there like that. You get what I'm saying? People, you know, she didn't even really freely speak about her relationship with Casey back in the 90s. So to me, she's kind of a semi-private person. And even if she is gay, I mean, honestly, who cares? She doesn't have to come out and say anything. That, like, that's her business. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, you're comfortable with your sexuality. You sit at your body. You're married. Your husband doesn't mind. And that's fine and dandy. But that's not your job to put that her information out there. And then you're saying she was trying to block you and all this whole type of stuff. Like, honestly, Jaguar, you blocked yourself. You have a really disgusting attitude and you, from what I heard, you were very hard to work with back in the day. I mean, a leopard, and honestly, I didn't have to hear anything because a leopard doesn't change their spots. I mean, you could just tell by the way this lady acts, her erratic behavior, she, this narcissism, she just acts like she thinks she's better than every other artist out there. Nobody want to work with that. So that's the reason why people probably back in the day did not want to work with her and her career didn't get too far. And now you're hating on Jill Scott and Erica Badu and you're still talking about Erica Badu. You know what I'm saying? She just put out so much stuff that people aren't really sitting there thinking like, hey, this lady has an issue. Like, honestly, from the time she came out with her videos, I could tell she was off. I'm 100%. And like I say, I'm number one believer in there's a lot of bullshit that goes on behind the scenes, not just in music, but in politics, everything. Like, I'm with the conspiracy theory, so trust me, I'm, I mean... I, I have no issue with that. Yes, expose the industry. Everyone knows there's a lot of crap that goes on behind the industry. But I feel like when you just start putting out stuff that's not important, you're putting out gossip, you're ranting and raving, you're starting unnecessary beefs with people. So now it's like, okay, what is your purpose? Nobody is even worried about Foxy Brown. Foxy Brown's living her life. She got a daughter. Why are you coming out and saying, oh, she was such a whore back in the day when you were too? <clears throat> you're, you're, you know, you're, not, and some of the stuff she don't like, Oh God, the story she came up with, I really thought was a mess, was when she said that she heard, mind you, didn't see it with her own eyes. This is secondhand account. She heard from someone that they walked into Puffy's office and he was getting head from Christopher Williams. Now, I have no doubt that Puffy's in his office getting head from men. I have no doubt of that. But was it Christopher Williams? Mm, I'm not sure about that. First of all, the story didn't make sense because for one, she claims it was a lawyer that used to work for Puff Daddy. Now we know Puff Daddy's a multimillionaire and he's been a multimillionaire. I mean, he's now, he's really, I mean, his money is really crazy now. But even back in those days, he was a multimillionaire, multimillionaire back in those days. So I can only imagine what this lawyer's salary was when she was working for him. She claims the reason why she got the information was because after Puffy fired her, after she quit, whatever the case may be, she started working for Jaguar. Now, that was like, <clears throat> why would somebody that had a job with Puff Daddy, probably making a real a lot of good money, come and work for you? What could you have offered her? So that story didn't even make any sense. And then she said that, and this was supposedly in the late 90s, and she said that... Um, what did she say? She said that the lady that Christopher Williams wanted a demo deal or was trying to get Puffy listen to his demo, something like that. And that's why he was on his knees doing whatever for Puffy. And this is in the late 90s. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense either. A demo, when you're trying to get your demo to someone or whatever, 
that means that this is your first time breaking artists, you're trying to get someone to hear your music, whatever. How could that make sense when Christopher Williams was already making music and was already had an established career since the late 80s, early 90s? So why would he be going to Puffy in the late 90s for a demo deal when his first album with that song, Don't Wake Me, I'm Dreaming, came out like in 1990? And remember, he was in that New Jack City movie too, which I think came out in 1990 as well. So why in the world would he be begging Puffy for a demo deal? And I had made that comment on the Christopher Williams post when this, because he had posted basically, you know, a little, you know, just semi acknowledging her crap, and even and he added me. He, you know, responded to me saying, "Thank God, somebody who actually has some sense." So the whole situation, if you really just evaluate a lot of the shit she says, a lot of it doesn't make any sense, y'all. And y'all gotta wait. And the thing is, I find, especially in the black community, a lot of us act off of emotions and not facts. We're so quick to jump on the bandwagon and to co-sign what somebody is saying without really thinking about it and really evaluating and saying, hey, does this make sense? This lady, I mean, has already proven that she's a liar. A lot of her stories has holes in it. There was a situation where she was at a hotel and she claims this lady was a Mary J. Blige fan and didn't like her and was being disrespectful. I don't believe any of that. Like, really, how would how would you know she's a Mary J. Blige fan? How would she know you don't like me? It it was it was just stupid. And all I'm seeing is that Jaguars is uh recording herself. Yelling and screaming at this lady. The lady's not doing nothing, threatening to call the police, yelling and screaming, calling the police, saying well, I think the lady was trying to call the police and she's yelling in the background saying, oh, she's trying to kill me. She has a gun. Why would you do that? Now you're putting her life in danger. You know what I'm saying? So, and if you, if you go on Jaguar right Facebook page, she has a video where she shows up at her ex-husband's mother-in-law's door to see her son. And that's another thing. She doesn't even have custody of her own son. So you're talking about all these different people. What about your dirt? Your husband left you and your ex-husband, you had two children, one passed away, unfortunately, which that I would not wish on nobody because I have an adult son myself. So I could, I could just imagine how that feels. So, you know, and I feel like she's still suffering trauma from that. So you need to be on a therapy couch, not on Instagram live all day, just going off. But her younger son, who's autistic, who is 18, she lost custody of him years ago. And she has a video on her page. If you look at her page on Facebook, where she's uh, <clears throat> showing up at the mother-in-law's door who has custody of the boy and basically trying to force her way into the lady's house saying, come on, you need to come see me. Go say hi to your stepfather. Like, And the boy did not want to go with her. He, looked, he seemed actually very nervous. And the grandmother's like, you know what? I'm about to call the police. And then she's like, call the police, call the police. And she's like, get your hands off of me. The lady was not trying to hit her. The lady was actually trying to like move her, like get off of my property. And then Jaguar is yelling, oh, she's trying to kill me. She's putting her hands on me. I mean, this lady is crazy. And for all y'all idiots that don't see that, I do not understand. You do not have to be a genius. Even Stevie Wonder can see through her foolishness. She's nuts. She's nuts. I mean, you know, it, it's really sad to watch because she she's become like manic. You know what I'm saying? And... Even when you see the, oh God, it's just so much stuff. I mean, you could really sit here all day and I'm not going to do that with her antics. I mean, it's just crazy. And when she, and she's running out of celebrity stories, if you notice. She's running out of celebrity stories. So now that she's running out of celebrity stories, what is she doing now? Talking about her family members. <clears throat> That's what she's doing. Now she's gossiping about gossiping. She's, she's running out of celebrity stories. So now she's gossiping about her family members. Now she's starting YouTube beefs with Tasha K and Storm Monroe and all that. And I'm not saying Tasha K is perfect. I really am not a big fan of her, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think Storm Monroe is okay. But, I mean, the way she flipped that whole thing. I mean, Storm, you're lucky Storm Monroe was actually giving the time of day. And he seemed to be kind of fond of you because he had you up on there several times. And you go and turn on him. So that's why he dragged you in that video, which I think you deserved it. And you had people trying to turn on him. You get what I'm saying? But it's like, and what really made me know this lady was losing it was when Tasha Kate had released the conversation of them talking. And she... Tasha, then, you know, story, what's the name? Jagger was like, how she edited the phone call. No, if you listen to that phone call, 
Stephen Cole was not edited. The whole conversation, everything that was said went perfectly together. You could there was nothing chopped up or edited at all in that in, in that um conversation. So um but I think her biggest downfall at this moment, I mean, like I said, she already has is is mentally disturbed and she needs to go get help. But I think the biggest problem really is her husband. He is the biggest problem because I'm sorry, I don't respect any man who sits there in the background like a simp because he is a simp and sits there. He's He acts like a, a gossiping girlfriend in the background, just cheering her along, sitting there watching her literally be mad and go crazy all day. I'm pretty sure she's telling the same stories all day, every day. You're sitting there driving all day, listening to her on live. Y'all are broke, obviously, because credit cards declining. They obviously don't have a proper place to live. Sometimes they're in hotels. Sometimes they're at friends' house. But they spend the majority of their time in the car. And then she's waking up in the mountains. I think they have a tent. So she's obviously homeless. So, I mean, honestly, you could sit here for a while and talk about this lady's craziness. But I don't respect the man who would sit down there and watch his wife literally fall apart and not say anything. Like, hey, babe, I think you need to, like, just stop it. You need to get off of social media for a while because it's actually making her worse. And, you know, you know how they say bad attention is better than no attention? She loves the attention, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. I mean, yes, she gets a positive attention, but she also gets a lot of negative attention. And I think she likes it. I just think she loves the fact because you got to think this lady has been out the limelight for years. You know, nobody was really checking for Greg. First of all, Jaguar Wright was never really big in the industry. She she was acting like she was some kind of trendsetter and everybody stole from her and stole her style. A lot of people, unless you were just a diehard Jaguar fan from the back in the day, a lot of people, there were a lot of people who didn't even barely remember her. Like out of that whole like Philly neo soul sector, it was really, as far as the women, it was really, you know, well, Erica Bad is not from Philadelphia, but as far but she rolled with them so as far as like the neo soul sector it was really um erica badu and jill scott as vocalists that really were the ones that were well known that really got pushed but then look at their attitude and look at their characters i mean if you've ever seen them in interviews especially jill scott jill scott's a sweetheart so that people don't realize when you're in the music business it's like you're selling a brand so even though yes jill jaguar right you are talented her she can sing there's no doubt about it like she can sing for real for real she is a wonderful vocalist, but there that's it. You could be the best singer all you want, but you have a nasty attitude. You're obviously a control freak. You want to run the show. You obviously don't know how to talk to people. I could just tell by the way you were talking to people in the hotel and the restaurants and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have a nasty attitude. You don't know how to talk to people. So if you were like that in your career, they people were not going to want to deal with you. Jill Sky is very soft-spoken. She's really sweet. So people probably didn't have no problem working with her. Erica Badu is also seems really sweet. You know what I'm saying? So people want that feminine. She has way too much masculine energy. And nobody wants to deal with that. I'm sorry, women. That shit is not cute. Y'all need to learn how to be feminine. Nobody wants all that masculine energy, that yelling and screaming, and that just like loud, obnoxious. That shit is too much. And the husband is a flip side. The husband is a total opposite. He has too much feminine energy. So their roles are reversed. It's almost like he's the husband and she's the wife, really. You know what I'm saying? It, their, their relationship is just really weird, you know? And then she says she's bisexual, but to me, I feel like she's probably leaning more towards women. And I really don't know why she married her husband and she claims she didn't even know him that long. I think they only knew each other for a few months of that. And he seems gay to me, too. He looks like he in the closet. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just think the whole situation is ridiculous. Um, I saw where she was on no... I'm not even going to say her name, but I thought her channel was ridiculous. But she was on some YouTuber's channel for like six hours. I'm like, you see, y'all got too much time on your hands. Like, this video, I don't want this video to go more than 25 minutes. And I probably won't be speaking on it again. I just want to put my two cents in, so... But anyway, y'all, um, that is pretty much all I had to say. I'm pretty sure there's some stuff I left out. But the bottom line is, I think that 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 Jaguar Wright is full of crap. Um, I don't like her as a person. I, I don't like women with all that masculine energy. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. 
And um, I think she has a really disgusting attitude. I really don't like her as a person. I don't understand anybody that can. I feel like anybody that genuinely likes Jaguar Wright as a person, you have just as much toxic energy as she does. Honestly, you had to have, you have just as much toxic energy as her, just as much of a dark spirit because there's no, there's nothing to like, you know, someone who's a blatant liar. Again, like I say, I don't have a problem with you exposing the industry, but you were exposing things that we already knew. And then you were going and just gossiping about people doing stuff that's not important. Like, oh, Todd Quelly cheat, was cheating on his baby mama. Who cares? Which of them don't? Which, which man don't? I mean, if you date in the man in the industry, I'm sorry, that's to be expected. I mean, regular men that don't have anything cheat. So what makes you think a man in the industry who actually has money? What you think? And then you were a part of it. You knew that the lady existed and you were still doing what you were doing. So it's just like, who gives a crap? You know what I'm saying? You're talking about Jill Scott will sleep. You were sleeping with a bunch of men too. You lost custody of her child. Guess what? Jill Scott got her child. Erica Badu got all, her, her three kids. You don't have none of your, you don't have your kids. I mean, yeah, one passed away. I'm sorry about that. But your younger son that you should have had, you didn't have him. So it's like you could say all, everything you want. Foxy Brown, you talk shit about Foxy Brown. Foxy Brown got her, has a beautiful daughter that she, that lives with her, that she takes care of. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, y'all, like I say, she needs to get off the internet. You know, she's not doing anything productive with it. She still has a great voice. Her voice is still on point, you know, because she sings sometimes on her live. So she needs to focus on maybe trying to really make a real album with real links that, you know, with, with that people will actually could download. She needs to make, she needs to come back and just focus on, you know, first of all, she needs to get a job for one, get a job and focus on your music and leave this internet crap alone. Now, if you really want to be a blogger and gossip, then do that. Then get a YouTube channel and do that. But this whole ranting and ra raving and just talking, like just really disgusting shit about people. It's like, it's this point where it's like borderline evil. Cause like you're trying to destroy people and people are sharing it along. So that's it. Anyway, y'all, that's all I have to say about this. Um, I might be leaving some things out, but, you know, it is what it is. I don't want to be on here too long. Anyway, thanks for watching. I don't know. I might, you know, tell me what you think. If you like the video, leave a comment. Um, I might um, maybe make another video if she posts something else crazy. I might give my take on that, too. <laughs> all right, bye.